Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Today we're going to talk about how to confirm if a function is continuous on an interval. Now in order to tell if a function is continuous, we really want to talk about its domain. You have to understand where does the graph even exist. Well, we've been doing this for the most part. We just didn't put it in this quite the same terminology as what we're going to do today. So the first uh, thing is we're going to look at three different restrictions. Uh, that usually will pop up for you. And the first is if you have a denominator. Whenever you have a denominator with a variable in the bottom, all you do is you just take that denominator and you just say, well, that is not allowed to be a zero. Okay, that's the first restriction. And then you solve it from there. So first thing is watch out for fractions and the denominators can't be zero. The next thing is even roots or radicals. When you have a square root, the square roots are not allowed to be negative. So what we do is we say, that 7x plus 3, whatever is underneath the radical, must be greater than or equal to 0. Now that's uh, allowed to be 0 because you can say the square root is 0. What you can't do is you can't say the square root of negative 1 because that would give you an imaginary number. But you could do the cube root of negative 1. That is allowed if that's just negative 1. Okay, that's why it says here the even roots. Third roots, fifth roots, seventh roots, that doesn't have a restriction. Just the even roots have restrictions. And then the last thing to check for is when we have logarithms. If you have a logarithm, I want to remind you really quick what a logarithm graph looks like. So if I just have an xy axis here, the logarithm graph is an inverse of an exponential graph. So it goes like this and then takes off forever and ever that way. And then it goes almost straight down. You have a vertical asymptote right here, dot, 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 dot. This vertical asymptote straight up and down, that helps to create the logarithm graph. And the idea is that this graph will never actually get to where x is 0. So this thing right here, whatever's inside the logarithm, that can't be 0. It has to be bigger than 0. So 2x plus 1 must be greater than 0. All right, so these are the three main areas where you're going to have restrictions on the domain that you're going to be faced with today. So this first one, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you four examples of how to find the domain. And then the last example, number five, we'll talk about how you just put it all together and just say what, what are the intervals where the function is continuous. So the first off is just domain. So remember here we have a fraction. All we're doing is looking at when is the denominator not equal to zero. And that's what you do. You take the denominator, say it can't equal zero. So the way we say this in is basically we say everything, which is all real numbers. That's how you say all real numbers in shorthand, a little r with a tail on it, except for zero. So we say everything except for zero. All real numbers except x equals zero. So that is uh, kind of like inequality notation, but there's also interval notation. So I'm going to show you, you could write it another way, or you could write it like this. And I'll have the answers to both of this in your practice solutions. It, you need to uh, be able to recognize both because on an AP exam, they could throw either of these at you. In fact, they usually do throw them both at you. So we're going to go from negative infinity until we get to zero, close the parentheses, and then put a u for union. It's almost like a u. A uh, union of uh, zero up until we get to infinity. Right? Notice they're not brackets. They're just parentheses because we don't include those points. Okay, so that's another way of writing your answer. You are going to want to be able to understand how to do both. You don't have to put both on like a on a test or a master check or something like that. All right, this one. We have two things going on. First, we have the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and take this denominator and say that the denominator is not allowed to be zero. Okay, that takes care of that. And then you take a radical. Whatever's underneath the radical, it can be zero, but it can't be negative. So it's greater than or equal to zero. And you solve that, you get x is greater than or equal to negative five. So then we put as our answer that x is greater than or equal to negative five, but it's not allowed to be zero. Okay, so that is our inequality notation. If we were doing interval notation, I'm going to say, or another way of writing this is we're going to start with a bracket at negative 5. The bracket includes negative 5 because it's equal to. And then we're going to go up to 0 with a parenthesis, union, start again at 0, and go off to infinity. We never include infinity because you can never actually get to infinity. It goes on forever and ever. So it's always parentheses there. Uh, OK, so that's the other way of answering that problem. Number 3. Okay, let's start off with the denominator. I'm going to say that entire denominator is not allowed to be a zero. If you solve this uh, over here, negative two, you end up with that x is not allowed to equal four. 
Okay, so if we plug in a four here, that would make sense because two would be two minus two, you get a zero. All right, now the other thing is whatever's underneath the radical, in this case, it's just an X, that must be greater than or equal to zero. So our answer is X is greater than or equal to zero, along with that X it can't be a four. So that's the uh, inequality notation. And then real quick, let's put interval notation for the practice of it. We do a bracket, a zero, go up until we get to four. We're not including four, so we have to skip over it, and then we start again at four and continue on to infinity. Okay, uh, let's do one more of those, and now a logarithm. So we have a couple things going on here. The first thing is anything inside a logarithm must be greater than zero. If you remember when we have a vertical asymptote uh, for a we have a vertical asymptote for a logarithm graph, and the logarithm graph looks something like this. Okay, so when that happens, that means whatever goes inside here, it can't be zero because nothing exists on the left side of the y-axis. And the second thing we have is that the denominator here, x minus four, denominators cannot be equal to zero. Okay, so the first thing, and this is a little bit weird, how in the world are we gonna figure out when is this positive? In order to have a positive fraction, because that's what this is, either both numbers on top and bottom are positive, or both are negative. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just write, okay, how do I get this situation? How do I have a positive over a positive? That happens if if the number that I plug in here, if you notice this, this x minus 4, that has to be greater than 4. So if x is greater than 4, then I'll have a positive number on top, and then this number on bottom will also be positive. Okay, the other situation would be if I have a negative divided by a negative. That could also give me a greater than 0 situation, a positive number. Well, when will that happen? Uh, if x is less than 0, that'll be negative, right? So if I have a 3.9 right here, it gets a negative on bottom, but still positive on top. So I get negative over a negative if the x values are negative, then I'll get negatives in both. Okay, so there's my two situations. That's when I will have a positive value inside the logarithm. And then if you solve this, you also get that x cannot equal four, which is okay, because we have that right there. So this is our answer for inequality notation. And if we wanted to write it with our fancy interval notation, you'd start off at negative infinity, go up until you get to zero, we're not including zero this time, It's just uh, so it's not a bracket. And then we're gonna do the union, start at four. We're not including four, so it's not a bracket, just a parenthesis, and then go off until we get to infinity. Now the last problem. We're saying here, where is the function continuous? We're not saying what is the domain. They might seem really similar, but let me show you why it's not the same thing. Maybe we have a function that goes like this, filled in dot, and then it jumps up here and keeps going on forever and ever. Okay, so if this was my whole function, don't write this down for that part. You can maybe write it on the side of your notes. The, if this was the entire function, the domain of this would be all real numbers. The domain is. But that doesn't, because there's, there's never a gap in the graph. There's a jump, there's a discontinuity, but discontinuous does not mean that the graph doesn't exist. Okay, so the domain is all real numbers for this. So it, I want to make sure you understand the difference between saying when is it continuous and what is its domain? Because those are not always the same thing, although usually they're very similar. All right, so let's start off with the first piece. Let's just go piece by piece. This thing, does it have any discontinuities? No. Does this thing have any discontinuities? Yes. What x cannot equal a seven. Talking about this second piece here. Okay, so that's true for this piece. And then the last piece, if we solved this, we'd get x cannot equal, add 20, divide by four, x cannot equal a five. Okay, so there's the only discontinuities as far as these little graphs are concerned, but now let's check the, uh, the piecewise function. Does, does it have a jump? So if we plug in a zero into this, plug in a zero here, a zero here, we end up with negative one seventh. Plug in a zero here, we get negative three sevenths. So you can see here, there is a discontinuity from here to here. It jumps from negative one seventh to negative three sevenths. So I'm gonna write down, just right below this, that we have a discontinuity at x equals zero, just to help myself remember that. All right, now let's look at plugging in the three. If we plug a three in here, we get three minus seven is negative four, so we get three over negative four, so negative three fourths. Plug a three in here, you get 21 minus 15 over 12 minus 20, 
which equals 6 over negative 8. Hey, and that's the same thing. That's negative 3 fourths again. Negative 3 fourths, which is the same as this one. Okay, so what that tells us is that those are continuous when these two pieces come together. When you plug in the 3, you plug in the 3, they're continuous. So we don't have any discontinuity there. So right now we have this discontinuity at x equals 0. Now let's go back up and look at these. You can't plug in a 5 into this thing. So you also have a discontinuity at x equals 5. But what about this? There would be a discontinuity at x equals 7 if the graph existed at x equals 7. But notice that the boundaries of this function are only between 0 and 3. Therefore, this discontinuity of 7 doesn't even come into play. We don't have to worry about it. So this one we ignore since it's not within the domain of that piece. So we have two dis discontinuities at x equals 0 and x equals 5. So when is this function continuous? So this is what we put for our answer. It is continuous from negative infinity up until we get to 0. And then union, we start at 0 again and then continue on until we get to 5. And then another union with one more interval. We go from 5 all the way up to infinity. And this is where the function is continuous. So this is putting it all together. This is actually the whole point of the lesson, where you're figuring out where's the domain and then where is this function continuous? On what intervals is it continuous? Okay, that's everything. So rock that mastery check and I'll see you back in the next lesson.